and I'm going to put no load. All right. All right, so what this means is if I build a circuit like this and hook a voltmeter across and measure, remember voltmeter has super high resistance so we don't alter the circuit. What you're doing here, see you look at these equations and a lot of times students are like, okay, great, I'll memorize that. But don't, don't do that. Try to understand what it's telling you. What it's saying is, when you, when you cover up this for a second, what you've got here is a, it's kind of like a ratio. It's like, how does R2 compare to the sum of both of these resistors? In other words, if R2 is very, very big, right, if it's the largest guy, then this, this numerator is going to dominate, and the denominator, since it's R1 plus R2, is going to be just a little bit bigger. So this, in other words, this fraction is always going to be a number less than 1. That's sort of the bottom line. But if R2 is very large, it's going to be a number very close to 1. Because if this is 1 million, and then this is 1 million, and this is like 1 ohm, then it's going to be 1 million divided by 1 million and 1. So you're going to get a very high, you're going to get 0.999 something, right? And then you're going to multiply by the 10 volts you started with, or whatever it is, very large number close to 1 times your source voltage. It means that almost all of your voltage drop is going to be across this resistor. That's what I told you before. If this guy is very high, most of your voltage drop is going to be across him. If this guy is very low compared to the other resistor, very little of the voltage is going to be across him. If this guy is very small, very close to 1, let's say this is 1 ohm, and R1 is a 100 ohms or something. Then I'm going to have 1 divided by, I'm going to have 100 ohms here plus 1, so 101. So 1 divided by 101. I'm getting a very small number times my source voltage, which means I'm going to get almost nothing there. So this is in math telling you what I've already said. If this is small compared to this guy, you're not going to get much voltage out. If this is large compared to this guy, you're going to get the majority of the voltage across. But don't forget, this is all assuming no load. This is assuming nothing is connected to the end. As soon as you connect something, you have to reevaluate everything to make sure, because it might change things a little bit as far as uh, the resistance. So what I'm going to do now is erase this. Let's work a problem. And I think your uh, understanding of this will go through the roof once we actually can do a real problem. So let's go ahead and do that. It's a very simple uh, problem to kind of write down. So I have 120 volts. Uh, and so here I have a resistor like this, connected like this. This one is 30 kilo ohms, right? This one's 50 kilo ohms. And let me kind of draw out here. I'm connecting off the bottom resistor now I have another resistor here, RL, that means a load resistor. And I'm, you can draw a little some terminals here if you want. What this basically means is I can detach the load or I can hook up the load or whatever. And so there's some voltage you know, that I'm tapping off, V0. That's what I, that's what I want to know. So there's two questions here. What is the no load V0? What is the no load output voltage? And then the second part is, what if I hook up 450 kilo ohms as a load? So let's do the first part first. So let's just say no load V naught. I'll put a question mark here. So this is simple. What it means is you cover this up. There's no load there at all. You have a voltage divider. You want to know what's the voltage across the 50 kilo ohm resistor. You basically back up and use what we already, what we already just said. So V naught is equal to the source voltage times, in this case, it's going to be R2 over R1 plus R2. I'm just kind of saying this is R1 and R2. We can think of it however you want. But what you have here, V sub S, that's 120 volts. The resistor in question is the one you're putting there. It's basically the resistor you're tapping off of divided by the sum of the two resistors. So here I have 50 kilo ohms. Don't put 50. Put 50 times 10 to the 3, because that's kilo ohms. On the bottom, it's R1. 30 times 10 to the 3 plus 50 times 10 to the 3. All right? So what you need to do is um, add all these things together and do the division. So you add this, you divide. So what you're going to get is V0 is 120. Inside here should always be a decimal. And what you're going to get when you take this and you divide by this, you're going to get 0 0.625. So V0 when you multiply by 120, it's 75 volts. And I'm going to put no load. Just like this. So this is what we call a no-load voltage. All you do 
is you uh, have the source voltage multiplied by something in there. It's the resistor value we're tapping off of divided by the sum of the two resistors. It's, a, it's splitting the voltage up proportionally, and you can see that now. Uh, because I'm doing this guy, I get a decimal. It's 0.625, so I'm getting a little bit over half of the voltage falling across this. That makes sense. 50 is bigger than 30 by just a little bit, so just a little bit more than half of the voltage should be across this resistor.